Hi everybody, it's Carrie Fennell here and live with Prima. Um, this is going to be a, a 101 watercolor class with the Julie Nutting doll stamps um, on our wonderful watercolor tags <clears throat> and using our watercolor confection sets. Um, these are our new pan sets uh, that Prima released in January and we have three sets that we release. I have two that I'm going to be using today. Um, first, I'm going to be using the Decadent Pies, and the number on that is 584276. Um, we actually, I think, sold out of these at Prima, and they're on reorder. And um, they've gotten a lot of great reviews online. They run anywhere from $20 to $25 U.S. retail. Um, and if you shop on Amazon or you're a watercolor enthusiast, you know that the tins alone come... Uh, come by themselves for 20 bucks just by themselves without the pans. Um, I didn't realize that um, until I started kind of reading reviews and what people are saying. So it's cool because we have the four wells here, the two wells on this side, and then we also have the little the little um, loop underneath so that you can actually hold on to it with your finger or your thumb uh, as you paint. So if you wanted to hold this you know, you can do it just like this, okay? Um, this other set here is um, the Tropicals. The Tropical set number is uh, 584269. And these have brighter colors, a little more depth to them. Um, these are more opaque paints, so they're not quite shiny, not as translucent as the traditional watercolor paints, okay? So what I also, I mean, this is our Julie Nutting um, hour or two hours. So um, they asked me to do a Julie Nutting feature on Live with Prima for National Scrapbook Day. And I want to say thank you to everybody for coming. If you are a friend of ours on our um, Live with Prima Facebook group page, um, there's a giveaway posted. And you can comment your favorite technique you've learned throughout the day or when you've watched one of the shows. Um, and you are eligible to win that prize. But also, if you're a Julie Nutting fan, we have a Julie Nutting uh, Facebook group page. And on that page, there's a whole separate prize that you could win. So it's really cool. It's a great prize. So head on over there and see what that prize is as well. And then, of course, all day long, we have Instagram prizes and, and all that stuff. So um, so for now, I'm, I'm featuring the Julie Nutting. Um, and what I'm going to start with is my base is our watercolor tag pad. Um, this is got this got 24 sheets of watercolor tags just ready to go and I just ripped off the lid. The number on this is 910-853. So there's 24 sheets, that's awesome. So you can just keep watercoloring to your heart's content. Um, these tags are really sweet to put on gifts and to use, you know, just as a little sentiment, a little decoration. You could also take these and frame these too, possibly. So all kinds of things you can do. But I think that these are really perfect if you just want to play on a surface and, you know, practice because it's it's just a tag. It's not a whole watercolor sheet. Um, I also have a few of my Julie Nutting stamps I'm going to use. And I have here, I have um, Valentina. She's number 910778. And then I have Candy. Um, I forget, I didn't bring Candy's number, I'm so sorry, um, but if you look up Julie Nutting Candy, <clears throat> like Google it, you'll be able to find her. And then I also have Skylar, so Skylar is um, 910945. Um, these stamps in particular fit perfectly on these tags. Of course, the tags were made to fit the longer Julie Nutting stamps. I also have my stamp block. So any of you that have not heard of this stamp block before, it's got this great handle. Um, you can use it, you know, left hand, right hand, and it'll give you a great image um, when you press it down onto a larger surface because you're using a larger stamp. Now for today's tutorial, I'm going to be using archival ink. So this is a solvent ink. You can use stays on. Um, any any permanent ink will work because you're going to be using quite a bit of water, so you don't want to lose your stamped image because that's what you're going to be coloring in and, and coloring around, okay? So I choose a brown, but maybe you want to choose black or, you know, um, maybe even a lighter brown if you don't want the heavy lines to show once all is said and done, okay? So these stamp blocks also come in 
this is a four by six. They also come in a six by eight. So we have them available if you um, if you dabble with the Bloom Girl stamps as well. So it's something kind of neat just to um, think about or you know get get that beautiful image. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in with parts of the girl. And what I mean by that is I'm going to just start, let's see, I'm going to get some water growing on my brush. These are the Prima water brush sets. You get um, two in the pack for like just the regular standard brush. And that number is uh, 580421. So you, you have two different tip sizes. So I like to go in and just prime my area where I'm going to be coloring with a little bit of water. So you just squeeze on the cylinder ever so slightly. You do not need a ton of water for this. Like I said, I'm just kind of priming it because I'm going to be doing the skin areas. Okay. So I want to get all my skin tones set up. Now it doesn't mean that I'm not going to go back and touch it up a little bit later because I may want to. Okay. So I'm going to add a little bit of water and then I'm going to grab... Um, some of my peachy tone here from the Decadent Pie. So this is about as close as you come to a skin tone. All right, and I'm just going to go in with that. And actually, this is light enough where you could go in direct to the pan and just start putting it right on. So it's going to go on real nice and smooth. Okay, just like this. So... Like I said, priming the areas that you want to work on first um, will help you just kind of when you go to touch down on that paint, it's going to help smooth it out so much better. Okay, so I have just a very light skin tone base going. So now I want to actually grab some of this umber here next to it. It's kind of got a little bit of a reddish tone. And when you mix that with this kind of um, skin tone or peach color, you're going to get variations of, uh, of skin tone, basically. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of work my way around one side or the edges of her face. If you go into the hairline a little bit, that's okay. Just remove a little bit. Okay, so I'm going on kind of thick. And I'm going on one side. You see, I'm just kind of working from left to right. Just like that. Okay, now I can go back. And even grab a little bit more if I want to add a little bit of rosiness to her cheeks. You see that? And every layer of color you put on here, you're going to just kind of create those highlights when you, you know, just hit certain sections. So that's all you want. You just want a little bit of variation in the skin tone. And you're going to do that. So if it gets outside the line a little bit, don't worry about it. Just your finger or paper towel and just kind of dab that up. This is not going to be perfect. These girls and guy are not going to look perfect. The lines, you know, some of the paint could bleed through a little bit. That's okay. Don't panic if it does. Okay. So now I'm ready. I'm done with the skin tone and I'm ready to move on. So I'm going to dry the areas that I just painted because the next area I want to color is like the hair. And I'd like to dry this before I start with the hair because then you will get bleeding from, you know, image part to image part. Okay, so now I'm going to clean up my brush. So now I'm going to go in with the hair. And again, I'm priming it. I squeezed all that peachy color off. And I'm just going to prime it. And you don't need a ton of water. You're just going to go in very lightly. Just very lightly. Okay. And I'm going to grab some of, um, this is the reason why I have the tropical set. There's a little bit of a brown right here. And I really like the brown. It's cool. And then I can actually take like a, a little bit of the yellow, mix that in and lighten it up. Or I can even go with like, dare I say, like a light, like a dark blue of the set just to darken up that hair if I want to. Okay, now I'm going to turn this upside down just so I can do this. Now when I go in the hair, I'm going to start at the bangs and kind of work my way up toward the middle. This way... I'm not brushing toward the face, and I'm not going to get the face. Well, I might get the face a little bit. That's okay. But this technique right here causes a lot less um, options or um, what am I trying to say? <laughs> um, you're less likely to have a disaster, I guess is what I'm saying, because, you know, that could happen. But if it did happen, grab your paper towel right away and just dab it. All right. 
just dab it and most of it will come off. So if you catch it quick enough, you'll be okay. All right, so I'm just going in light with the hair. I'm gonna work away, try to work away from the face. So this, this part's a little meticulous, but it's, again, I don't really care if I see some variations and you know a little bit of white coming through here or there. I kind of like how um, the color, oh, see, I just mushed it with my finger. That's okay. I'm not too concerned. So, so that's the hair. Here, let me hold this up for you so you can see my mistake. See where I got it on the outside just a tiny bit? I'm not too worried about that at all because I'm going to be coloring my background. And you can kind of see the skin tone and what I've done. Okay. So, so far so good. It's looking good. So now let's say, for instance, like I dried this before. I can absolutely... Um, here, let me wash some of this brown off so I don't contaminate. Um, I could absolutely go in again and wet my brush and grab some more of that peach and that red and mix it together and just add maybe even a little bit more shading. So that's what's kind of cool. So see how I'm making these lines right here? And they're kind of stark. Like I can see a line. So I'm going to take a different brush that doesn't have any color on it. It has just water. Squeeze a little of that water out. And I'm just going to probably, yeah, I'm just going to get that out, get that wet, and then I can blend out a little bit more, okay, and get rid of that harsh, harsh line. So don't panic. If you get like a harsh line in there, you'll be just fine. See? And then I can go back in with just my water brush and smooth that out into the center. See? Just like that. Now, um, I'm going to dry the hair because, again, it's one of my steps. And I'll dry the skin because I'm pretty much done highlighting. So, you know, this is really fun to just kind of experiment with. All right. So, next for her dress. All right, let's see. That's clean. Yeah, make sure your brush is clean. Just like you know, squeeze some water out and go over your uh, <laughs> go over your paper towel just a little bit. Now I'm going to prime the dress area too. Squeeze a little water out. Now you can use. You don't need to use a Prima water brush by any means. I mean, you guys could use a, a regular brush with uh, a cup of water. This is just more convenient and this just helps things move along a little bit quicker. Plus, you have like a real nice fine tip and a little bit goes a long way. Okay. So, if you're traveling and you want to do these, I think having the water with the brush is kind of a nice convenience. Okay. Now, I'm going to go into my blue here in the Decadent Pies. It's not the bright violet blue, but it's the darker blue next to it. Like, I want to call it like an ocean blue. Okay. And I'm just going to pull some of that into my well. And I'm going to just gently start adding that to where her dress is. Now I say gently because, you know, I'm going to try to keep within the lines the best I can. Okay. And I'm just not even going back for an awful lot of color. You don't really need to. And if you find that you have like a puddle, don't worry about that. You can just kind of go in dab a little bit off because you don't want this super saturated but you do want it wet okay for reasons you will see in just a second okay so there we go so now I'm gonna go direct to my pan I know this is gonna be really scary and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up the brush with that heavy pigmentation right along the seams of the stamped image now you'll see it start to kind of pull up here I'm going to bring it up around the lines here, and the lines here, and it's really kind of wicking out, right? Okay. So you can keep some of that concentrated color just kind of going in. And this is where you can start going along lines and going along the sleeve of her dress. And you can start to see it, like, you, you know, come alive. Okay. So again, I'm going to do that. Okay, 
So that's kind of scary because you're like, oh my gosh. But then you just take a, a clean wet brush and you're going to go back over it with a little bit of water. And this is where the magic happens. So this is where you can start to kind of move that paint around. You know, and I'm starting to see some of it come off outside. I just, oops, touched with my finger. Very messy during shows. Okay, so I'm just kind of, again, going along the line. So here I have a lot of water, so it kind of wicked out. But you can see, like, it's starting to create that dimension. Now, it doesn't look awfully smooth. I'm going to take that clean water brush with no color on it and get that blue off. And now I can take it and just kind of go in, and now I can kind of work out those uh, those colors even more so. I can blend a little bit more so I can make the space not look so stark compared to the dark blue lines. Okay, and you're just kind of moving that around just ever so lightly. And see, so you're making like folds of her dress, but it's very watercolor. It's very, you know, very sweet. Um, I can even go back in, maybe pick up a little more color if I wanted to, but it is, um, it is pretty easy. So now down here, it's starting to kind of go down into her legs. I'm not too concerned. Okay. But that's how I like created some shading. And when this dries, it's going to dry, um, much lighter. And I can even go in with even more of that concentrated blue. And let that kind of wick out as well. You know, this is not going to look perfect. It's going to look handmade and watercolored. And I think that I just love how concentrated the color is sometimes. So to me, it's just beautiful. So down here, I can kind of pull up some of those darker colors, the darker pigment in here. And again, I'm, I'm using my clean brush, which I shouldn't have done. I should have gone back to um, the other one. So do you see, you're just going to keep adding more pigmentation depending on how dark you want it to be, how you want it to look. Okay. So it's getting a little bit messy, but it's, it's actually working out fine for me. I, I really like doing this. And I think with the watercolors, you know, it just is going to add... I don't know, kind of a homemade look. Okay, so I'm going to dry this because it's getting a little messy. You can see how much lighter it is already. But it's really cool because I like the variation in color around the pleats of her dress. And I think it's it's pretty. Um, so hopefully you guys like that idea. Now I can go back and even do, I know I've dried it, but I can even go back and just kind of go along the bodice here. Okay. Take off some of that color and then just start blending out too. Just like this. Okay, just making little variations here and there. So now I've kind of um, enhanced the bodice. Okay. All right, so then, oh, you know what else I got to do are her boots. So I'm going to make her boots blue just like I made her dress. And again, I'm just going in with a little bit just of a base blue color. And I can take off some of the water on my hand and kind of lap some of that up if I got too much on there. And now I can go direct to the paint, to the pan. And I'm just going to go along one side of her boot just to create a little bit of definition here. Just a little bit of shadowing. And that's really it. And again, you can take just a brush without any color on it. You can pick up some of that color if you feel like it's too dark. Okay. 
And this is actually really relaxing to do in front of the TV. All right, I'm going to go ahead and dry her boots. Yeah, the blue and the white would work great for Christmas. Absolutely. You could um, stamp some little snowflakes in the background if you wanted to. Um, anything goes. Okay, so now for my background. Like, I'm going to make my background a little bit basic. And I'm going to take one of the flat brushes that I have. This is from the flat brush set. There's actually three in the set. I only brought two downstairs. The number is 585891. Now here's why I love the flat brush with this whole idea. Um, you have a nice water brush, yes, but you also have a straight edge. So I can go right up to the edge like this and just start priming it. So this is, what I'm doing is I'm just basically adding a little bit of water to this background. I'm going to squirt a little water out. There we go. Again, priming it just like I did with the dress and the hair and everything else. So I'm going to go in with the green now. And I'm going to be doing just a basic green wash, okay? And I'm pulling the color away from the image. So I'm going from the image and out, which makes, I know it's hard to see. I'll hold it up in just a sec. All right, here we go. So that time I went direct to the pan and I pulled a little bit more color than I normally would. But I'm just showing you that part of the wash you can go direct to the pan or you can just, you know, and spread the paint down, right? Okay. Just like that. Okay, so the cool thing is, um, now that I've got kind of this minty green going on, I'm actually going to do the whole thing while I'm at it. I'll squeeze a little water out of my brush. Get this whole thing kind of primed up and ready. Mix that wash in my well. And you see all these little areas next to the girl. You can go in nice and straight up, right up into the into the image. I'm gonna go in here in between her arms. So a little bit of that comes through. Okay. And I'm just gonna keep bringing that green right over. Okay. Yeah, so that straight edge just allows me to go right up to her and get in there. Okay, so if you can see, there's some of that green all over the place. Now, here's the fun part. So it's a little kind of wet, right? So I'm going to go direct to the pan, and this is going to freak you out at first, and you're going to touch down just with the color. It's going to freak you out at first because it's like, oh, it's a lot of color. But I want to shadow in and have the background a little bit deeper right around her. And this is where it gets kind of fun because now you can kind of just let some of that pigment do its work. You can just let it sit and do its magic. And I'm actually creating kind of a shadowed effect next to her. Okay. And I can bring a little bit of that color down and darken the other areas as well. Okay, so we're starting to kind of create a halo around her, so to speak. Does that make sense, you guys? If not, you know, Delaney can text me and say they have no idea what you're talking about. All right, so again, I'm going to pull some of that deeper color here right next to her. And I'm going to touch base over here as well. Okay, and I can remove some of that color from my brush. I'm going to go in with just plain water and just kind of drag some of it around so that, again, it's more concentrated right next to her. And then I can kind of fan out the color as I go. And this is where you'll start to see, you know, some of the white spots coming through. But see how I, I just kind of shadowed in around her with just a little bit more color. Now, I think... I would like it to be a little bit darker green over here. 
So I'm just going to actually work in even more of that darker color right around her. Make it look kind of funky. Are you squeezing water out while you're doing this? Yes, you don't have to. Do it very gently. Okay, up here there might be a little too much color. Hmm. Maybe. So if you do that, just grab a paper towel, pick some of that pigment up. There we go. Yes. Sorry, I'm being quiet as I'm, I'm coloring. I must concentrate. Okay. So I like that modeled effect like around her, surrounding her. And I can take my brush and go up to her, up to her hair. I can actually pull some of this color away from her. All right, I can go around it a little more. I can go deeper in here between her arms. You can see some spots. So it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be okay. Yep. Now you can still go in with a paper towel and even take off even more if you really think that you might have added just a little too much or you got a little too crazy. See, just like that. So now I have this really pretty area right around her. And now I'm going up with that flat tip brush and just getting rid of some of those spots where I may have missed just a little bit. Okay, going right up to her. And I can even add a little bit more color down here if I want by her feet. Okay. So now you can see like the dimension and how I work through that. Um, now some of it did bleed in onto her legs. Okay. So if you want to touch that up, you can. And I'm going to show you how in just a second. So I'm going to go ahead and dry this and get it to where it's not sopping wet. Because if you start like dabbing it with a paper towel to try to get it to dry, you're actually going to remove the color, which is not what you want to do. So, you know, hitting it with a heat gun, I, I would recommend rather than going at it with a paper towel to dry it up because you're just going to remove color and you're going to remove everything you just did. Okay. That's pretty good. Okay. So now I'm like, okay, crud. I got a little bit of color, you know, contamination on my legs. Okay. So I'm just going to go back in with a little bit of those reds and peaches again. And I can actually, I'm not going to be able to cover up all of it, but it's definitely going to tone it down. Okay. So do that here do that here that's a bummer about water coloring is like you can get kind of messy and uh not mean to and to me I, it doesn't really bother me if it bothers you a lot you know just be real careful when you're going next to your to your areas around her boots and everything okay but it doesn't really bother me much at all but um she definitely looks water colored and hand done so you know for the sake of the show i probably could have been uh oh uh oh. Hold on a second, guys. Cortana is trying to talk to me. Okay, I'm back. Sorry. That, that stinking thing comes on sometimes, and you're like, what in the world? So there she is. And I thought, that's kind of pretty. Do you guys like it? I mean, it's, it's um, easy to do. It looks like you hand painted the girl. And, um, you know, we'll move on to the next one if, if you guys want. <laughs> Selena okay she doing okay that poor thing okay so next would you like me to do um would you like me to do Skylar or or candy because I'll I'll do either one whatever you guys prefer it's your day we're doing this for you guys today thank you
Oh, Bente. I think I think it's Bente. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. I'm sure it's getting late for you. Oh, just Amazon troubles. Thank you. So yeah, so um, the boy, you want me to do, um, I mean, I, I don't have to do them exactly like I did them here, but um, you know, I could do candy or you guys want to see the boy? Good night, Bente. Thanks for coming. Thanks for spending the day with us. The boy. Okay. I've got a lot of people respond to the boy. If we have time, I'll do, I'll do candy too. You know, it doesn't matter. We got time. Today it's for you guys, so I'll keep going until you're sick of me. Does that sound like a good plan? <laughs> okay, so Skylar. He's a lot of fun. He's he's kind of cute, but sassy. You know, he's a tween, I think. I want to say he's kind of a tween. Okay. All right, so let's get him going right here. So again, I'm using the archival ink. It's the potting soil, so it's that nice brown color that I enjoy using on just about everything so I guess why not Julie Nutting stamps too. Alright so for him I think I'm gonna do um I'm gonna do his skin first, his hair first and then we'll move on to his clothing. So here I am again. Oh I got way too much water on there. So that would have been a big mess. So just a little bit of water is really all you need. Just getting it primed up here. And there's not a lot of skin, so that's kind of nice. Like if you don't like doing the skin tones and the shading and all that, this is a good one to use. The ones with lots of clothes on are good ones to use. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start here. I always go from left to right. Maybe if you're a lefty, you might go the opposite direction. I'm not quite sure. Okay, so I'm just adding that peach color to the whole skin area. Now I'm going to go direct to the pan and shade in on that one, on like kind of like the left side. And now I'm going to grab some of the red and the peach together, take off some of that water here, and just go around the edges here. Okay, so this is where I'll go in with a clean brush. And maybe just kind of work it out just a little bit. Okay. Just like that. So he's got a little shadowing to his face. Let me hold this up for you. See that? That's pretty wet. So I think that looks good. And now I can dry it. And this dries pretty fast. Another thing about drying it in between applications too, you guys, is so that you don't start beating up the, the watercolor paper too bad. Like it kind of, if it's really wet, it's more apt to, you know, kind of um, come apart and pill up. Okay, so there, I've added some red to his cheeks. Now I'm going to go in with a clean water brush. I'm going to work some of that out. Don't be nervous. Okay, so I worked my way out from the cheeks, made him a little red because he's blushing because he saw a cute girl or something. Uh, yes, that's what I'm going to go with. <laughs> cute girls all over. Okay, so there you have it. So that was pretty easy. So that's, again, something, you know, you could take a bunch of his face and stamp it all on a tag and just practice doing different skin tone colors. You know, maybe you want to do a little chocolate. You want to do um, maybe just like a nice light brown color, you know, or something. That's a perfect way to get really good at, at doing some of these. All right, I'm going to dry it again real quick. So I'm going to go in with the hair, just getting that primed up and wet. Yeah, I'm working upside down. I, I kind of like whatever I'm coloring to be closer to me rather than far away. I feel like I'll have a little bit more control. <clears throat> okay, so for this, I can grab a little bit of the yellow out of the Decadent Pies and a little bit of that brown too. So I can give them kind of a dirty blonde. Hopefully it won't look like you know what. It doesn't look too bad. All right. 
So a little bit of that is wicking off into his face already. So I'm just going to clean that up. Take off some of this water on my skin here. All right. And just go dab in with a paper towel. You can dab in around the edges and then just fill in again and get rid of some of that water. Okay, I'm going to dry it. There we go. So, like I said before, we could dry it, but then we can go, I can go direct to the brown. And I can kind of go around some of those lines in his hair. And just give him like little low lights. I don't know, low lights, highlights. You know, and he spends a lot of time out in the sun, so his hair gets different colors in it. I know my boys do. They lighten right up. They get weird colors in their hair in the summer. It's actually kind of cool. There we go. So now I've just added even a little bit more a darker tone toward the middle of the hair, and that I could certainly you know, work out just a little bit more, you know, even that out even more, but that's pretty much it. You know, I've got this little part over here. Take my finger and move it away. Oops, I think I just gave him a big blemish on the face. That's all right. Okay, so I'm going to dry that again. So next I'm going to move to his clothing. Um, I have, I, I want, I'm going to put some blue jeans on him. So, you know, we're going to revisit that really beautiful blue color again. Let's see if I still got some on this brush. Yep, I do. So I've still got the blue on my brush. So that's okay. I'm going to squeeze a little water out and prime it even with some of the color on there because I already know what color I want to do. So we're doing kind of the same thing we did with the dress, right? We're starting out with that nice, that nice, um, light blue color. All right. There we go. Okay. We can even remove a little bit of that water. Okay. So now I'm going to go in. Yes. Direct. Direct again. So I'm going to follow this line here. Just right along the seam of his pants. I, I'm not adding any more water. There's just always, there's already a lot of water on there. <clears throat> I'm going to do this side. Oh, yeah, there's a lot more on my brush than there was here. So I can actually pull some of that up and bring it over to this side. I'm just going to drag it along down the pants. Okay, I'm going to go in with a clean brush, squeeze a little bit of water out and pull that color toward the right. Okay, so it's kind of just kind of going from the dark to the lighter side and see how that's just kind of working that color out and you're creating that shadow effect. And I think that's kind of a, a cool thing to do on your jeans. All right, and I can even leave it darker in some areas because it's really wet. So I can actually let the the water and the paint do its magic on its own too. So sometimes if you have quite a bit uh, of water already going, you just basically just need to touch down with a little bit of that extra paint. So this does take a little bit of a of, you know a fine touch with the tip of your of your marker, but I know you guys can do this. Went outside the line just a little bit. God forbid. Okay, and I can keep just working in those puddled areas where I've already added the water. And just kind of leave it. You know, you can just leave it without even messing too much with it. So can you guys see that? 
So it's all about just layering and adding a little bit of depth to the clothing. And if you work from one side to the other, it's kind of nice because this side's going to be a little bit lighter. It's going to look like you shaded, you know, you, you were adding your own shading and purpose. Okay. Just like that. And I'm just lightly touching down and not squeezing any water out. It's already wet there and I'm going to leave it. Okay. But it was with the very fine tip of my pen and it was just adding a little more of the, you know, starting with your base coat, adding a little shadow, like going along the left side, bringing it over and so on. So you can just keep um, working with those layers. That's what's really great about watercolor. Now, let's say you dry it and you want to go back in and fix it up a little bit. No worries. You're not going to be able to reconstitute any of the paint that's already on here, but you can add more paint to it to get um, to blend it in better if you want to. So like for over here, I may just want to, you know, kind of go a little bit closer to the paint line and maybe just make it a little bit darker. But, you know, that's it. That Now I'm happy with it. Okay. That was fun. His jeans are kind of fun. <laughs> now I'm going to go in, I think I'm going to give him some red sneakers, not red, red, but kind of like a brick red. We have like kind of an umber red over here. And I'm just going to, I didn't need to prime these because guess what? They're so, this is such a small area. It's not necessary. So you're good. And I don't think that I need to do a ton of shading on his sneakers because like I said, it is such a small area, but I can, you know, I can certainly douse it with a little bit of a darker color here. Pick some of that up and move it around. All right. So that may be a little too dark, but I don't know. The paint dries a lot lighter than it looks when it's wet. So if it looks like it's awfully dark, just kind of add a little water or make it, you know, make it lighter. Then you can always add more later if it's, you know, if that's, if you're concerned about that. All right. So now I'm going to go to a shirt. Um, I have to be careful because I keep grabbing brushes and I don't want to grab a brush that has a color on it. And then I accidentally get a color on here that I don't want. That would stink. But if that happens, just go with it, okay? Go with it. It might end up being like your favorite one. Okay. So I think I'm going to do that same red. And I'm going to go over here. And, ooh, yeah. So for instance, here I have a lot of water. No big deal. I can just keep pulling it up. I love how I use my hand. I just, it's just easier for me. Now, don't forget you, you've watered the bottom half too. So you gotta be a little bit careful. So, and then I'm going to go in with that real dark and I'm going to do just his shoulders and the bottom of his sleeves. And I'm going to kind of let water do its thing here. Just keep dabbing at it and let the water do its thing. Okay. There we go. All right. Clean brush. Yep. Go in, pull some of that down with a clean brush. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and zap that dry. Water doesn't know where to go. Okay, there we go. And now I think I'm gonna just add, um, I'm gonna use some of the yellow for the bottom part. Let me get some of this color off here. I'm gonna go in and use the yellow from the Decadent Pies. And I'm crazy. I went direct to the pan because it's a lighter color. So 
I don't want to sit here and add layer upon layer upon layer of yellow, which I don't think you really would because the stuff is pretty concentrated, but I want a nice dark kind of mustardy yellow. There we go. And this, you know, you can shade it with um, a little bit of a, a darker yellow here. I've got darker yellow right here in my pan set so I can kind of go along the sleeves of the shirt along the top here. All right, so I like that. Work that out a little bit. I'll hold that up for you guys. Can you see that? See the two different yellows together really kind of make a difference. And I like how this turned out up here because it looks like his shirt's kind of faded, you know, a little bit worn. Let's see if I can do a little bit of yellow up here. I don't know. I'm kind of take a little color off. Yeah. But did you guys watch the Kentucky Derby? Before uh, before I came on, yep, it was on. Uh, what's his name? Uh, what's his name? One. Shoot, I can't think of the name. I want to say it's like Nyquil. Sounds like Nyquil or something like that. <laughs> I was like, what they say that horse's name was? All right, so we kind of, you know, we've got some good stuff going on here. Now, let's say we want to get his jeans a little bit dirty. You could put, you could pick up, let's see, let's, do I dare? Do I dare pick up a, like a little bit of this? That's kind of that brown, that reddish brown. And I can just kind of put it around the knees. Oh, that's the reddish brown, yeah. Kind of make his knees a little bit dirty. Just a little bit, so you don't need to leave a lot of that there. Kind of make him ready like he's been playing outside. Got some dirt on him. See that? That looks more realistic now, right, moms? <laughs> okay, so um, now I'm just going to go ahead and dry that, and I'm going to... <clears throat> work on the outside. Yes. You know, you can even make one of those little poppets. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but you can cut like his face off and put your boy's face right here. Wouldn't that be so cute? Okay, maybe not. Maybe that'd be a little creepy. I don't know. I thought it sounded cute. All right, so now we're going to, you know what I'm going to do? Oh, this had green on it. Oh, my God, give me a paper towel. Hold on a second. Um, I'd actually like to, at this point, maybe do um, some shading, more of this darker shading down here by his feet. And then we'll make it lighter as we go up. How does that sound? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and prime this. Again, the flat brush is my friend. So just priming it up. I'm going to start with just the bottom here. Um, okay, there we go. Okay, and you know, I think I'm going to go with, hmm, what should I go with? Hmm, I guess I could go with a little bit of, um, I kind of want a nice color, but, you know, I want to go with the, um, no, I don't want to go with the green again. I just did the green. Um, the decisions, decisions. Hmm, maybe I'll go with the brown. I think I'll grab the brown, and then what I'm going to do is I'll mix in, I'm going to mix in some of that blue with the brown and make it kind of, um, like a real dark 
I don't know if I want to go this dark. That's pretty dark. All right, we're going to go for it. We're going to go for it. Okay. Have no fear. So I mixed a little bit of that brown from the the um the tropicals. That's a real nice kind of earthy brown. And um, took a little bit of that same blue I, did, I used on as blue jeans from Decadent Pies and um, mixed those two together. And I got kind of a, a grayish, like a bay grayish kind of gravelly color. And um, at first it scared the crap out of me just now, but I kind of like it. So um, at first I was like, oh gosh what did I do and you can always go in wet it and remove some of that color too see and so this is where you can do some real fun stuff with the shading and everything right so again I'm going to go up here add a little water I'm going to remove it look at the cool effects you're getting on that background okay I'm going to grab some more of that color You guys see what I'm doing here? Okay. So remember, we're just priming the background. Like we're getting like kind of that lighter color that we're looking for, like the shadowy kind of color. Okay. Now I'm going to go in and remove some color where I want to. And you can kind of punch it with your paper towel and it'll give you that kind of mottled look. Kind of like that. Okay. Guys upstairs having pizza without me. I'm just going in and touching up some of the, I can see some white around him that I missed. <clears throat> it kind of looks like stone. I kind of like it. Okay, so I can go in. And just kind of touch down where maybe I want a little bit of that ruddiness to show. Uh, maybe go up here. All right. Something like that. This is pretty wet, so. Really go in with some heavier color if I want to down here at the bottom and have no fear. Just kind of dab that up a little bit. That's creating texture. And this is real easy. This does. This kind of looks like stone. And I kind of like it for like a masculine card like this. So let me dry it up here. And then I'll be able to, you'll be able to see it without a, a glare of color. believe how sturdy these tags are I, mean, I gotta say these tags are not they're not super thick but man these hold up to a lot of manipulation so what do you guys think yes you could use the stone or brick wall stencil for this absolutely you could um you know use all kinds of cool textured backgrounds to keep it in that masculine theme that's a great idea joe Oh yeah, like a oh yeah, you're right. Like a bouquet of flowers he pulled. Um, 
yes, the potting soil archival ink is what I used. So you guys like that? Okay, here, let me hold it up a little bit. I don't know. I just really think that this looks more cartoonish, like more, I don't know. I like it. It's softer. It's not so stark. Um, and then you can just kind of play around by mixing the colors any way that you like. Okay, so we have our two da darlings that we've done. And we've done just kind of different backgrounds, more kind of a modeled, you know, messy background. And with her, we, we concentrated more on the areas around her. Right? Uh, another cool thing that you guys could do, too, is, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, come back to her and uh, put a little bit of, uh, you know, glitter on her dress. Let's see. Here's Candy. So Candy, um, I did the same thing kind of with her dress with the green. And see how I concentrated on areas around her with the what with the yellow, and I gave her like cute little red shoes, so totally cute. Yeah, the vibrancy to the color stays with it, even though, you know, <clears throat> it's watercolor. Um, but something like this, like you could take some of the soft gloss gel. And it's just if you wanted to even just dollar up just a little bit more, you know, I can take some of that soft glass gel and just kind of go along the lines of her dress, just with a l very little bit of glue. You don't need a lot. So you're like painting this gel medium on to the point where it's just going to be kind of just sticky, right? And I'm going along the seams of her dress. This, the size of this brush is zero, by the way. It's from the Finnebeer brush set. And then I can just kind of, this is the art sugar. This is uh, the white art sugar. So this is kind of like a fairy, they call it fairy dust. So and right now you can kind of see the lines, but once the glue dries, and you can still manipulate the glue because it's still kind of wet. And you can just, you know, it'll dry completely clear. And so she'll just have a little bit of sparkle uh, to her dress as well. That's another fun thing I like to do. I think that's really cute. So maybe we'll just do a little bit here along the end of the sleeves. another fun idea just to add something but you know this was just a basic class to show you guys um, you know there's certainly so much more I could do with these dolls you I've seen so many amazing um, creative ideas on Facebook and on Pinterest um, you certainly know where to take it to the next level so this was basically a one-on-one -on -one class just so that you can get your you know get your hands dirty with a little bit of watercolor paints you know try them out with, uh, you know, try them out with uh, the dolls on the watercolor stamp sets and just kind of have fun. Have fun with that shading. Have fun with the pigments. You know, don't worry about the lines kind of crossing a little bit or it's not being completely neat. I know that matters to some people. But, um, you know, don't worry about any of that because you can, you know, practice and it's supposed to not look perfect, actually. Um, another cool thing I wanted to point out before I go, uh, did I bring it down with me? I don't know. I thought I did. I had one of the little card sets, um, you know, because the little card sets have like little uh, sentiments and they kind of match the whimsical look. And a lot of people are saying, well, what would I do with a card, card sized doll? Well, maybe not much. Oh, here, here it is. Like, so here, for instance, is... Um, the Mother's Day set. So this all matches kind of like Julie's, you know, um, her her whim, her drawings. And so something like this would just look so darling on here. And this could go right on the present, you know. Um, you could stamp it right on. So another idea, because I know not a lot of people have the card sets. Um, but the, that, if, if even if you didn't think you'd use the dolls, um, I think just for the sentiments alone, I think they're worth it. Uh, just another idea. So I've I've collected all of the 
the card sets. There we go. And there it says, Happy Mother's, Happy Mother's Day. Oh, I'm going to give it to my mom tomorrow. Done. I'll be like, Mom, here's my tag. That is a gift for you. <laughs> Just kidding. I'll get her a gift. <laughs> but that's kind of what I like about the card sets. And I know a lot of people have said, oh, I, 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 they're too small to, to color and to cut out and all that. And that's probably true. But like I said, you get all these other wonderful stamps in those sets. Um, and this month, it's called Mama's Day. It's 910723. Um, but there's um, like six or seven more that you could choose from. And I just like the sentiments alone to use with her dolls because the, it all matches her style. And she, after all, she did design them. So it makes sense. Okay. Ah, oh, you're welcome, guys. Thank you. I mean, thank you for kind of hanging out with me and um, spending the day with us. I hope you guys are having a great time. Don't forget, you're going to go to um, Facebook and you're going to go in the Live with Prima group page and you're going to comment what your favorite uh, tutorial was today or technique to uh, try to win a prize. Plus, check out our check out our Instagram page. Uh, it's just Prima Marketing Inc. Check out um, uh, Twitter. Check out blog hops every two hours. The designers have their teams doing blog hops. It's another chance to win a prize. So there's stuff going on all throughout the day. So um, lots of chances to win. You know, just check it out. Put your name in. Throw your name in there. You know, go for it. Okay. Yes, comment, comment, comment. I think you can comment up to seven times on the Live with Prima Facebook group prize because we had seven shows today. Okay. Thanks, Beverly. Thanks, Jasmine. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thanks, Marquez. Uh, I love seeing you guys. And I'm going to see you in an hour with Tiffany. Tiffany is going to be coming on doing a Creating in Faith um, Bloom Girl tag. So please uh, go get a snack or go potty. Do what you got to do. And um, we'll see you in an hour. All right? Yes, on the same post, it, it can be. You want to go and um, you can comment seven times on the same post, you know. All right, so thank you for tuning in and joining us on National Scrapbook Day. I hope you enjoyed the show, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.